so my name is uh, Gert-Jan Wisse. I'm a landscape architect and director of POB plus B here in Amsterdam. And we are an office for uh, landscape architecture and urbanism. Um, and our office maybe developed a little bit different than other offices. Um, we had our 40, 40th anniversary last year. The office was established by two ladies, Bakker and Bleker, Rick Bakker and Bleker. And that's why uh, we're called B plus B right now. But after 10 years they left the office and uh, the group of people that worked in the office at that time moved the office into a uh, foundation. So we are a business, but we, the business is owned by the foundation and people from the office, directors and also employees are in the board of the foundation, so we basically own our own office. And that's why we uh, are basically organized as a collective. Uh, we also try to put that in the workflow. So. Um, we are a very open office, everyone has their own style, so we are able to express that and that's why also some are, our work is not always um, in one line, but um, it has different styles and different uh, ways of, uh, of designing and that collectively is the way we work. We think landscape architecture is um, purely a cultural act. Um, so we think that uh, in our work we basically continuously are negotiating the way that we want to uh, work together or live together in the city uh, and also the way we want to um, uh, position ourselves towards other people, towards nature and towards um, history basically. So depending on the, on the context of the, of the project we uh, are very much looking at what you can find already. And to work in that way, especially in urban, uh, urban projects, uh, you need to do a lot of research on um, what you can find and what those meanings are uh, before you start kind of recomposing or putting another layer. And we always try to um, make designs that uh, bring people together and that with like the uh, little, uh, uh, little as possible additions uh, become very social place. And for example, the Mariehofstrasse is, uh, is a good example of that. And then the third part would be maybe the uh, urban nature. So we think that uh, the city, when it developed, became much, much um, uh, over time really a kind of built space. Uh, but we forget that it's actually on top of a natural environment or a natural system. And we try to bring those natural systems back in our designs. Uh, so in the Mariehofstrasse, it's a very uh, good example of uh, how this change in mobility uh, on, on top of everything that we want in the city, um, how that developed into a very good project, I think. So before, the Mariehofstrasse was an um, artery, main artery from the, um, uh, from the Bahnhof into the city center, um, four, lane, uh, four lanes of cars, but also underneath there is the metro. And uh, at the same time, when it was uh, a car lane, it was also the most important shopping street of the, um, of the city, so those things kind of completely uh, clashed. And uh, because the metro was underneath, there was the possibility to take out uh, the, this street and cars would kind of naturally divert into other arteries, so there was no problem in that, especially because the metro would just serve the street perfectly. Um, and that made space to make a street that is much more public and much more actually uh, a key link in the public space of the entire city. Um, and so we did the design, but at the same time uh, it became a very po political project. So uh, the, the design became part of a referendum and the referendum uh, was um, uh, uh, went together or parallel with us closing the street for half a year just to show uh, what would that be the, uh, the possibility and when uh, we, the day that we closed the street you saw that uh, people took over the, uh, the space as it was theirs and it became really a uh, public space but also somehow a political space so there was all kinds of manifestations and protests happening in relation to this referendum. And it was really a close call. Uh, after the poll it was 53 percent so we just made it but after the project was, uh, was made um, they redid the poll and it became out, uh, I think, something like 79%. So that, I think, um, shows that 
this kind of changes from um, a space of flow, a space of infrastructure into a public space, really for everyone, where you can uh, also sit on a bench and you don't need to buy a cup of coffee. Uh, it's really that kind of um, space where people can meet uh, is really needed in, uh, in cities. So this idea of uh, cultural memory that also used to be or is in uh, the, the, uh, the project of The Hague is very much also um, a leading element in the uh, Beatrix Locks project. Uh, so there the, the question actually was uh, or the situation is that um, in the Netherlands there's of course a lot of waterways, also waterways that are shipping routes and this is um, a canal linking two rivers in the center of the Netherlands uh, that is uh, one of the most important uh, shipping routes and there's this um, monumental uh, lock right in the middle and the lock had to be widened so we had to actually make another lock next to the monumental lock and our office was uh, asked to do both the landscape plan but also the quality plan for this uh, redevelopment. And for um, widening this lock, they also actually had to widen the canal, um, make it actually uh, twice the size. And the dike that had to be moved to, um, to make this, um, actually we found out is the dike where uh, bunkers were hidden in the dike, so you could not really see them um, before, uh, but um, they had to be moved. And because uh, those bunkers were part of the Dutch defense line, uh, a, li a defense line on the scale of the whole Netherlands that was made in, in the end of the 19th century to prevent the western more economic valuable part of the Netherlands from uh, possible enemies from the east. Um, because of that line is uh, in nomination of UNESCO World Heritage right now, it's impo uh, important or actually impossible that, uh, to remove those bunkers. So we had to come up with a strategy how to uh, widen that dike or widen the canal, remove the dike and still um, leave this line from north to south in Holland in place. Uh, so we basically uh, developed all kinds of models uh, together also with the committees that have to um, assess this, uh, this change. And we came up with the idea to take up these bunkers and um, move them 60 meters and lay them aside carefully so that uh, still the line is complete, but you can see or you can actually feel that something has happened and that they're not um, in place anymore, that they're not there for defending, but that something has happened to them. Uh, and that is what has uh, been approved by all the committees and that is also what has been done in the last uh, year right now. So these bunkers of uh, thousands of tons are being moved with this kind of special crane that they developed for it, 60 meters from their place and slightly tilted so that this kind of um, landscape of, uh, that all is al almost a museum kind of appeared and that also makes a route uh, where you can, where it's very readable that uh, something has happened to these very monolithic bunkers. In our project Wijkeroog Park, we're actually much more talking about our relation with nature next to our relation with. Um, uh, with history, let's say, because it's a, it's, it's a design for a park next to the uh, Amsterdam harbors. Uh, and right now it's a project or a park behind the dike, but before in history it used to be this area where uh, salt water from the sea used to meet the fresh water, very fresh water from the dunes. And right now it's uh, because we uh, engineered our country as a complete water machine, uh, that meeting never happens anymore. Um, but the question was to do a park, uh, which is actually quite an unremarkable park next to a little neighborhood. Uh, but when we uh, dig deeper into um, um, uh, maps and old uh, information, we found that there is this used to be this stream that probably was still somewhere in the tunnel underneath. And uh, we actually found it and we uh, reopened it, re-daylighted it to, became, to become basically the, uh, the main line in the park. Uh, so what we did was, uh, because the rest of the land used to be lower, we had to kind of capture it in, into this um, 
um, little channel. So we designed a channel of white concrete that would lift this fresh water a little bit from the surrounding areas. And it became this kind of defining line through the, uh, through the park and ending up in a pond where we wanted to have um, this more brackish or salt water from the canal also in. So we proposed to make a cut in the dike of course, in Holland, that's uh, pretty much impossible. So, in but we almost uh, made it happen, but in the end, they said no. So we had to uh, find another way to find to make this brackish water meet this fresh water in the park. So we um, um, came up with a, a fish passage that uh, allows fish to migrate, but also uh, the water to uh, to meet in, into do into the pond, um, and this stream of super fresh water meets this brackish water in this pond and be basically becoming this uh, apotheosa of um, new ecologies that uh, that are there because of that reason and that are actually very rare in the rest of the Netherlands. Uh, so it basically becomes a, uh, a route that uh, the people that uh, use the park or visit the park uh, can uh, walk and they basically make a dance with this white line that uh, goes through the park. And uh, this place where this new ecology emerges is also a place that uh, was very unpredictable for us. So we couldn't really steer or uh, predict what would be the, the um, outcome. Uh, so we kept following it after uh, completion and we saw that in the one year uh, all of a sudden the reed would be two meters or three meters high and the, the following year uh, actually all the reed was gone and there was only uh, clay, a kind of uh, um, dried out clay on the floor because there was uh, the salt basically uh, re-established uh, a new ecology and the trees are dying but that is actually the, the whole idea is this um, uh, idea of bringing back real um, natural processes into our lives, something that we are actually not um, familiar with anymore because everything is so neat and so organized. And this, this park, a very small neighborhood park, actually became this uh, showcase of, um, of natural landscapes.